All right, let's dive right in today. Uh, I want to talk today about, uh, about a, a subject um, that I, I know is a, is a word from the Lord for you today. Um, you know, you hear, you've heard sermons and you've heard messages, but some of you may not have grew up in a background where sometimes the pastor brings a word. <laughs> not a word, a word, all right? A word. I want you to get your heart ready today because I know that today I have a word from the Lord for you, okay? How many are ready for that? How about the rest of y'all? Y'all, you want to go to Burger Up? What y'all want to do? Come on. How many are ready for a word today? I want it. I'll take it. Matter of fact, if y'all don't want it, I'll t- I've already preached it one time. I'll take it and boomerang it right back at myself. I'll take it. I'll receive it now. Uh, I, I do want to, though. I felt it this week as I prayed. Uh, I prayed for this, for this service. And then even yesterday, last night, and this morning, uh, praying for this. And I just feel like this is going to be... For, I believe for all of us, you can grab something out, but there's going to be some key people that are going to grab something here today that's going to impact uh, the rest of your life. So are you ready for that? Amen? Come on. I want, to, I want you to turn to Ezekiel 37, and uh, if you don't have a Bible today, then uh, on your app or however you, however you read it, if you have a laptop computer, that'd be awesome, or a desktop computer, if you just want to pop that puppy up on the person, that would be so awkward, it's a big iMac, ah. uh, all right. Yeah, but if you, whatever you want to, I, you know, there's something about the Bible though, isn't it? Just like the Bible, like, like there's something about opening up pages, just smelling that, that leather, you know, and open it, just, oh man, I just, I I miss, I read all, I read on the app most of the time or on my computer, but man, there's just something about that, that Bible, I love it. So I'm going to read from the Bible today, all right. The hand of the Lord was on me, Ezekiel 37 and 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me. I'm going to read the entire story, and then we're going to go back and unpack it. All right? Don't worry. It's only ten verses, so don't hyperventilate. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. And he set me in the middle of a valley, and it was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. And he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? And I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. And then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound. Back in Mississippi, we call that a rattling sound, okay? There was a a rattling sound, and the bones came together bone to bone. And I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. And then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what The sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied and as he commanded me, I prophesied as he commanded me and breath entered them and they came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Everybody say, thank you, Lord, for your word. Now, we're not going to get to all of this today. We're going to start it, and we'll finish it next week or the week after. But I want to dive into it today, and I want to unpack this. And we're going to go, uh, some of it we're going to go line by line. Uh, So those of you that grew up in a church where that's how they preach, you're going to really love the hills today, all right? You may not like it next week, but you're going to like it today. I want to just unpack it. Uh, So this first line that stands out to me, starting back at the beginning, is equal 37 and 1 just leapt out at me this week, the very first line, the hand of the Lord was on me. Come on, how many want to live a life that the hand of the Lord is on? I'm not talking about just a good life or a great life. I'm talking about a life that God's hand is on. Come on, how many want that kind of life? I, I, I hope that when I die, there's some good things said about me. I, I really hope so. But I'll tell you what I really want. I want people to say to, the, to whoever's around at that time to say, man, that guy, the hand of the Lord was on his life. God's hand was on his life. 
And God's hand wants to be on your life. You know, God doesn't just want to direct your steps. He wants his hand to be on all of you, not just your feet, right? He doesn't just want to guide your toes. He wants to, his hand, he wants his hand to be on you. And all, that, all it takes for that to happen is for you to say, God, I want your hand on my life. I want you directing me and, and guiding me and protecting me. And then the next line, the hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. I can tell you this, there are some folks that have the hand of the Lord on their life, but they're not being led by the spirit. You can have the spirit in you and still not be led by the spirit. Because being led by the spirit requires some obedience, amen? First of all, it requires trust. And then it requires obedience to what God tells you to do. The Spirit-led life. Galatians says this, if we live in the Spirit, everybody say live, let us also walk in the Spirit. That word walk means to be, to be guided or to walk in military formation. When, when he says go, we go. When he says stop, we stop. I'll tell you this, there is no greater life to live than the Spirit-led life. No greater life. Also, there's no, there's no more fun life to live than a spirit-led life because he's always mixing it up, amen? Just You never know what's going to happen when you're living a spirit-led life. He brought me out in the spirit. So I want to encourage you if, you, if you didn't come from a church background or maybe you didn't even have a church background, but if you didn't come from one that taught you to live a spirit-led life, I want you to hear me loud and clear. Over this summer, we're going to be talking about how to live a spirit-filled and spirit-led life, all right? So just get ready. Look at your other neighbor and say, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Well, y'all don't like each other? Look at your neighbor and say, get ready, get ready, get ready. There you go. I like them. Their breath smells really bad. Well, give them a mint. He brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and he set me down in the middle of a valley. Everybody say, "Uh uh-oh. I don't know how valleys got to be bad. You ever notice that? Like, uh, this, we got, we, I mean, growing up, there was always these songs about the mountaintop, ah, and then I'm down in the valley, you know? <laughs> I mean, Torrin Wells got the song, you know, hills and valleys. It's all like, and I'm like, man, mountains, that's the hard thing. You've got to climb up that puppy, you know? A valley, you can trip into a valley, just stumble right into the, into the valley. It's like... There's meadows and lushness everywhere. Like, why, who made a valley so bad? So valleys aren't, aren't so bad, right? Are we cool? Valleys aren't bad, right? Please? It'd be amazing if it's just a complete exodus. People just stood up and go, this is not good preaching. I'm leaving now. I'm a valley person. All right, here we go. He set me in the middle of the valley. Valleys aren't bad, but watch this. And it was full of bones. Uh Uh-oh. That's a bad valley right there. And then not only was the valley full of bones, look at what verse 2 says. And he led me back and forth among them. So not only has he been led, listen to this, by the hand of the Lord and the spirit of the Lord into a valley of death. Now, if those of you that think that God won't lead you into sometimes valleys of death, then you've mistaken the hand of God and the Spirit of God. Did you know immediately following Jesus' baptism, you know where the heavens are ripped open and the dove ascends upon him and the voice of heaven says, this is my boy, I'm pleased with him. Immediately following that experience, the Scripture says, and the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. So if you think the only thing that God ever leads you to are beautiful lush things and amazing experience. No, sometimes the spirit-led life will lead you to into a valley of dry bones. I hope that helps somebody right now, that you're questioning if you heard from God right now. Are you questioning if God really loves you? Are you questioning, do I even know the will of God? Because you've ended up in a place that you hate. And you know, that's okay every once in a while just to look at God and say, yeah, I don't like this spot. I think we think we got to be Christians like, oh, I love this. This is amazing. God is good all the time and everything is just perfect. How many have met those kind of Christians before, right? It's amazing. Every once in a while you can just go, I hate this place, okay? 
Don't like being here. Don't know why you brought me here. I trust you. I'm going to be obedient to you. But I want you to know I don't like it, all right? <laughs> God can handle it, all right? It's okay. Okay, so not only does he bring him to a valley of dry bones, then watch what he does. He led me back and forth among. So not only do you drop me off in this spot, now you're making me walk around all of this mess. Just death and desecration and decay everywhere. And, and the Lord just leading him around it, just through a femur and around through a skull and just, just leading me through it. Not only, not only where, where's the valley of bones, the next line says, and I saw a great many bones. Not just bones, a lot of bones. Many much bones, okay? Tons of bones. And then the next line, and those bones were very dry. Okay, all right, look, this is going downhill really fast, you know? Yeah, it's just like really, really, really fast. You know, it's like I started off, hand of the Lord is upon me. I'm being led by the Spirit of God. Oh, God, what are all these bones? Like, anybody ever felt that way in your world? You know, like, like you start your relationship with God and you give your heart to the Lord, you feel this, the rush of, the, of the, 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 just being covered with the blood of Jesus, man, and the, the fresh start that you get and the filling, with, fill, and filling of the Holy Spirit. And, man, you, you oh, let's go. How many, remember those, how many remember that when that happened to you? Come on, you don't remember that? Oh, you need a refresher. Come on, if you don't remember that, you need a refresher. How many remember that moment that you asked Jesus to be your Lord and everything changed? Like, whoa! And it's like, man, his hand's on me, spirit's in me, let's go. And then you're rolling with it, and about two weeks later, you're like, oh, God, what have I done? (laughs) Or maybe it was a year later. How about when the Lord begins to call you to a new place? You know what I'm talking about? That feeling you feel in you, that kind of tugging on you, like, come on, let's Let's go. And you're like, oh, let's go. All right. You know that he's calling. You get fired up and excited, kind of like that little puppy dog. Where are we going? Where are we going? Let's go. Let's go. And then here you are. You're rolling, and everything's beautiful and flourishing and fruitful. And, and all of a sudden, the trail gets a little dusty, right? And then it gets brown, and it's really brown. And then you're in a desert, and there's bones everywhere. And you're like, man, where did I miss it? What, what did I do wrong? Where did I go? God, do you not love me? What, what, is, what is happening? And sometimes it doesn't even take years. Sometimes that can be the beginning of a week, you know? Like today, I ran out of that grave. And we're just ready to take on hell with a water pistol. Like, let's go. We can do this thing, man. <laughs> right? And then, some, and then like at lunch today, you're just ticked off. Like, I can't believe I'm here sitting with these people. My Lord. <laughs> or maybe it's Tuesday or Thursday. Come on, is it just me that does that? Like, come on, let's do it. And then all of a sudden, it's just dead, dry Bones everywhere. So then here's what happens. Verse 3, Ezekiel 37 and 3. Y'all doing good? Everybody good? All right. He asked me, God asked Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones live? And I love the faith of Ezekiel. Sovereign Lord, you alone know. (laughs) Is that about the safest answer you could ever give? Do you want them to? Okay, I don't know. Is this a trick question? And, and, and God is like, look, I ask you, okay? I, let, me, let me tell you this, say this, and you can write this down if it's good. If it's not, don't worry about it, okay? This is, I think it's good, though. If God asks you a question, he doesn't need the answer. He's not trying to cheat on the test, okay? He knows the answer. If God ever asks you something, it's for you. The answer's not for him. It's not like you answer, he goes, oh, thank you so much. I didn't know what we were going to do about that. Oh, no, if he asks you a question, the test is for you. So, son of man, can these bones live? Now, let me give you the Ragsdale theology on this passage right there, okay? And you don't, it, it may not be true, but I'm going to give you what I think. We just read 10 verses, right? Didn't we? We read 10 verses, and you saw the process that went on. Remember that? The bones coming together, the muscles, the tendons, and all of that, all the stuff that goes on. Here's what I think would have happened. I think that if Ezekiel would have answered the question right, it would have been immediate. I think when God said, son of man, can these bones live? If Ezekiel would have said, yes, mass army immediately. Could it be that you and I are in a process a little longer than we need to be in because we don't have the right answers? 
We're not speaking with faith. We're not speaking with authority. We don't have trust in God. Come on. Man, somebody said he's preaching to me right now. I don't know if that's for you or not, but it's for me. Then verse 4 he says, Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. First of all, look at that first thing that he tells him to say. How's that for just awkward? Prophesy to these bones. Is that just the most awkward thing you could ever do? Just to roll up to a pile of bones and just start prophesying. And yet, isn't that how it feels sometimes? That God gives us an assignment. God calls us to something. And he says, man, I got a, here's a word I want you to deliver. Here's a mandate on your life. Here's a mission for you. Go for it. All right, who am I talking to? Bones. Maybe it's who you work with. You go to work and they're just dead, dry, brittle. Why am I here? Who are these people? I don't even like them. What, what am I doing? And God's saying, speak life, speak hope, speak joy. Maybe it's a relationship that you're in, right? Maybe it's a neighborhood, a school. I don't know what it is, but you, you know what I'm talking about, right? When you feel like God wants you to do something great and, and live a great life, and yet what you're looking at, I'm going to prophesy, and it's just a valley of dead, dry bones. And the only thing you ever hear back is the echo of your own voice from the other hill. But he said, prophesy to these bones. How many want to know how to prophesy what God wants you to say? How many want to know? Do you want to know? All right, I'm going to tell you. Here it is. He said, he said to them, prophesy to these bones and say to them, and then he gives them the word to say. How do I prophesy what God, no, don't get freaked out by that word prophesy, okay? The word prophesy means just to speak the future. You speak, you speak something either that you know that God has spoken to you directly or God just tells you to say something and because you say it, it happens, all right? That's what prophesying really is. And so here's how you prophesy what God wants you to say. You ready? You just simply say what God has already said. Just speak what God has already spoken. I was raised in a Pentecostal background, and man, the gifts of the Spirit were a big deal to us. Man, we believed in, in you know, the, the gift of prophecy, word of knowledge, tongues, interpretation of tongues, gift of wisdom, and all, man, all word of wisdom, and all that stuff, raised, raised in it. And then I meet some people, and you use that, some of those things, oh, I could never do that. I don't, I don't know how to prophesy. God hasn't given me that gift yet. Yes, He has. He's put it in you. It's here. Well, I, I don't know how to do it. Well, you got to get the chills on you first, okay? You got to get the organ music. No, don't do it. Just say what God has already said. You get a word from God and you just say it over and over and over and over. Well, I don't know how to get a word from God. You have one. Look, right here, you have a word from God. I'm not sure what I need to prophesy. Just open it up and just start saying it. So God says to Ezekiel, here's how you prophesy to dead things. Speak my word. So those of you that are in a dead, dry situation, those of you that are in a hopeless, there ain't nothing much hopeless than dead, dry bones, right? Like there ain't nothing going to ever happen. If you feel that you're in a situation that is that hopeless, I want to encourage you to get out the word of God and start speaking his promises over your situation. Man, I wish I had some folks that amen me right now. Speak, dead dry bones. Come on, help me. That's a joke. It was a bad one. I shouldn't have said that. It was dishonoring. I shouldn't have said that. Withdrawal. Let's withdraw that comment, please. If he said it, you can say it. If God said it, you can say it. Speak it, declare it, prophesy it. And so he says to them, dry bones. Okay, what do you say to dry bones? What, what do I ever speak to dry bones? Here's what he says. Hear the word of the Lord. Starts right off. Dry bones. Calls them out by name. Hear the word of 
the Lord. Now, if I felt anything for today as your pastor, this is what I really felt. And I, I hope you get more out of this than, than just this point. But if you, this is a word for someone today or a few people today. There are some of you that need to hear the word of the Lord over your life. You need to hear a word from God over your situation and over your circumstance. You need to understand God is speaking over your life. You need to hear what he's saying. And you need to understand that no matter how dead the situation is, no matter how dry the circumstance is, no matter how depressed you may be, the question is, what is the Lord saying over the situation? I know it looks like a valley of dry bones. I know it looks like there's never going to be any hope. But what is God saying over this situation? I want to encourage you to stop looking at the valley of dry bones and tune into what the word of the Lord is saying over this situation. That was a good word right there, by the way. Isn't it so easy to focus on this mess instead of listening to what God is speaking over it? Because God sees the potential in the situation. All he needs is a voice to declare it, to proclaim it, to prophesy it. But I, I, but I, don't, but I don't see it. Listen, you don't have to see it. If he said it, count on it. If he said it, count on it. Grab hold of that word from God because his word is truth and it will come to pass. The scripture says his word never returns void. Hold on to it. When you don't know what else to do, grab hold of that word that God has given you and hold on to it with everything that you have. Kristen and I, when, you know, God spoke to us to plant a church in Nashville and our first word was, uh-uh, not going to do it. Love you and all Jesus, but it ain't happening, Okay. You need to go find somebody else. We're not the person for this job, all right? And I, I'll tell you right now, telling God no is never a good idea. Uh, and so he came back around. The Lord came back around uh, you know, a little bit later said, plant a church in Nashville. Then it wasn't a no, just like, oh, man, really? And, and finally, about the third time, it was like, plant a church in Nashville, okay? It was like, <laughs> And there have been times in, in the process that Chris and I have had to grab each other's hands and hold on to a word that God gave us. When times were tough and we didn't know where the money was going to come from, we didn't know, man, how are we going to ever get anybody to show up? And man, just, just hanging on to the word from God. The word, God said do it, so we're going to do it. We're going to be obedient. Just hanging on with everything we got. And look at here. I want to encourage you to do so. What is the word God has spoken over you? Is there a word that you know? And it may not have been a, thus saith the Lord. It could be like this dr a dream that you've had. That was awesome, wasn't it, actually? <laughs> I mean, maybe it's a dream that God's given you. Maybe it's a, a prophetic word. Maybe it's a scripture you held on to or, or just something in your heart. I don't know what it is, but how many got that? Just nod at me like this. Nod, I got it. Listen, hang on, baby. Hang on to it. And when you don't know what else to say, say that. God said. And when they don't say anything back, God said. Man, I'm feeling a little Pentecostal right now. Because here's the deal. God's word does not return void. It happens. And you think about it. When, when the scripture says, in the beginning, what's the first thing we hear God say? Say it loud, Gwen. Let, boy, you need to do a Bible reading. Wouldn't you amazing? <laughs> Wouldn't you just love to hear? No. Oh, man. Ron, we got to work on that, man. Just a, the audio Bible by Gwen. <laughs> I didn't really tell you. On down, it's going to get a little colorful. I'll tell you right now. Let's go ahead and read it. <laughs> Come on, say it with me. Let there be light. And what happens? What? There was a process. Right? No, there was no process. Let there be light. Bam, there's light. And I love it. And the scripture says, and God says, it's good. It's almost like it shocked him, you know? Let there be like, whoa, that's good. I'm really good at this creating stuff thing. I'm going to make some more things, you know? It's like, but have you ever thought about this? There had never been light before. 
There was no such thing as light. So how does it happen? God had faith in his own word. You know, God never asks you to do something that he doesn't do. He asks us to have faith in his word. He has faith in his word. He just believed it. Man, I'm going to say it. It's going to happen. Let there be light. Boom, there is light. What if you and I could have that same kind of mindset that we go, if he said it, it's going to come to pass. So I'm just going to keep saying it and saying it and saying it and saying it and believing it and believing it and believing it. But I don't, but I don't see anything. I don't, I don't see, all I see is dead things. I see darkness. I see there's nothing there. Not some of you right now, I don't see any hope. Well, look at what Romans 4.17 says. This is a great passage of scripture. The first half is really good. Read that when you get home. I really want to read the second part. It just says this. God who brings the dead back to life and creates new things out of what? Nothing. Nothing. Look, look at what a couple of other translations say about it. I like, I like how, how the NIV says it. And he calls into being things that were not. The New King James, he calls those things which do not exist as though they did. You want to know how to prophesy? That's how you do it. You start speaking things that are not as though they already are. Instead of, man, we're never going to make it another year. We, we won't make it another year. We're going to be in divorce court. There's no doubt. We're gonna, it's going it's to be done, you know. It, we're over. The, this business is going to fail. Uh, man, but you know what I'm talking about. Just whatever it is. What if you started speaking things that are not as though they already are? Look, this is not positive thinking. This is a life of faith. This is how you live a life of faith. Faith is this. You ready? This is faith. Reaching out and grabbing hold of nothing and holding on until it becomes something. That's what faith is. You just grabbing hold of nothing and just speaking it until it becomes something. Oh, come on, look at your neighbor and do this. Say, woo that's good, baby. <laughs> New things out of nothing. Things that are not suddenly are there. Things that don't exist, you speak them as though they did. Here's what I'm believing. Come on, let me move today from being a pastor. Can I step into a prophetic role for just a moment? How about the rest of y'all? Come on. Don't let me scare you. Here's what I believe is about to happen at the hills. I believe that there are inventions and innovations and ideas that are in this room right now that have not even popped to the surface. But because we're starting to say this and we're teaching on how to prophesy and how to pray, we're going to look seven weeks, seven months, seven years down the road and backtrack to this day when somebody grabbed hold of something and go, okay, here we go. Let's go. I believe that. Amen? Not because I'm preaching it, because it's time for it to happen. I believe there are business strategies in this room. There are creations and art and schematics and business plan and, and teaching ideas, ways to, to teach students differently and ways to administrate things. And The greatest songs have not even been written yet. I believe that. In this room are number one songs waiting, wait, just waiting, just waiting. There are promotions, there's restoration. Everybody said restoration. I believe there's joy, I believe there's life. The greatest babies have yet to be born yet. I'm believing for that today. Okay, I'm back to pastor now. What if we just grabbed hold of that? Come on, what if we grabbed hold of that and just said, man, I, I believe it. I, 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 believe, I believe that. And this is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones, Ezekiel 5 and 6. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Now look at this. How many of you want to prophesy like God prophesies? Come on, raise your hand. I would like to know how to pray like God prays. I mean, because it works, right? When you agree, when he says it, it happens. So I want to prophesy like God. Go back to that first slide right at the beginning, okay? This is what the sovereign Lord says. So this is the first words. Remember, we've said, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now they're, they're attentive. They're listening. What's the first word that they're going to hear from God to them? I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. Remember, a moment ago, we read those ten verses. And you remember everything that went on? Remember? The bones came together first. 
then the tendons and the muscles, and then the skin. What was the last thing that happened to the bones? What? The breath. Notice what God does? God starts prophesying the ending at the beginning. He doesn't start with a little tiny prayer. Okay, first of all, we're going to try to get the finger bone to connect to the hand bone. Right? How many of you would say that most of the time your prayers start off really small? God, if you could just help me pay this bill. God, would you please let her be nice to me? Come on, am I talking to anybody but me? Instead of praying a big prayer, we start here. You know why? Because we really don't trust God. We're afraid of failure, of the rejection that's going to happen if we pray some big old honking prayer and it doesn't come to pass. God doesn't do that. He starts at the very beginning, the very ending. He goes all the way to the fulfillment of the prayer, and that's where he starts. Growing up in Mississippi, as I said a moment ago, I was well, I don't know if I said that. Maybe it was an early service. I was, I was raised Pentecostal and uh, Mississippi Pentecostal fella, and, and we had a way of, of praying for what we called lost souls. How many know what a lost soul is, right? How many know some lost souls? I hope you do. If you don't have lost souls in your life, you need to get some lost souls around you, all right? Yeah, but we had a way of praying for lost souls, lost loved ones, and this was the prayer. I'm telling you right now, I've heard it so many times. It was this, Lord, I just want you to make them miserable. How many ever prayed that prayer or heard someone pray that prayer? God, I just want you to make them hate life so much that they ain't got no chance, nothing else they can do but turn to you. That's what we want to do. Make them miserable. Because that's how we start praying. Like, God, can we just do this? And can we just figure this out? You know, and what can we can we do that? Instead of going right to the very end of it, the fulfillment of it. What if you and I started praying big, honking, faith-filled, audacious, crazy kind of prayers? What if we started praying those kind of prayers that we that we look down the road and we say, that's where I want this relationship to be? And say, saying, God, please help us to get through a week without killing each other, okay? What if we started praying, God, I am thanking you that we're going to celebrate our 50th anniversary and people are going to come from all over the world to see us and they're going to see the fruit of our marriage and, and they're gonna, they want to be a, they want to, they want to set our marriage as an example for that. Instead of, God, please let our business just make it through one, one more quarter. Could we, what if you started praying, God, I'm believing that we're going to not only have this business, but we're going to help, we're going to help other businesses. We're going to. God, can I please just write this check for this bill? What if you started praying prayers? God, I want to write checks for other people's bills. <laughs> Big prayers. Come on. What if we prayed this way? Let me ask you this. How many of you have, how many of you have a big dream? How many have a word from God over your life? Raise your hand. Come on, you know it. God's spoken something. Come on, this doesn't work. Come on, if it's a big word, come on, let's go. How many have a big, look at the hands, look at this, what if we all started praying crazy big prayers, believing for big, huge things, we can rock this city for the glory of God, you hear me, we can wreck this city for, with God's presence, if we just started praying the prayers that God's already placed in us, now let me ask you another question, come on guys, let me ask you another question. Thank y'all for being patient. They're so kind. I told them to hold up. They've just been sitting back there waiting on me. Let me ask you this question. Here's a really important thing. How many of you, close your eyes. This, this, we'll do it this way. I don't want anybody looking around. Close your eyes. How many of you have either a word, a promise, a vision, something you've written in a journal, whatever it is, and you feel like it is, it's so big that you don't know that you can, you can handle it. Raise your hand. Okay, hold up. All right, put your hand down. Open your eyes. How many of you <laughs> have something in your heart that God's given you that you feel like is so big you can't handle it? Now raise your hand. Okay, look around. Keep your hand up. 
Come on, you thought you were the only one. Right? You thought it's because of your mistakes, because you're not talented enough. You're not gifted enough. You're not educated enough. You don't have enough experience. We all feel that way. Most of the time, that's how you know it's a word from God. Because God is never going to give you it. Listen, if you can fulfill it by yourself, it's not a God dream. Every God dream requires two things. It's going to require other people, and it's going to require God's spirit. If you can do it by yourself, that's just your dream, okay, and good luck with it. But if it's huge, I mean big, like building hospitals big and, you know, changing countries big, if it's that big, seeing a neighborhood transform, seeing, and some of you are in a business right now, you're in a career, and, and you have ideas of how to change that, but there's a way that it's always been done, that's just the way they do it. How are we ever going to change it? But you have some ideas. What if you started praying that prayer? Believe in that. In this room right now is enough potential for us to change this city for the glory of God. Not just have a great church. Change this city for the glory of God. Change the atmosphere of this city. Change the atmosphere of your family. So here's what I want to encourage you to do. I want to encourage you to take that big, crazy thing that God's given you and start praying big, crazy prayers filled with faith. Well, well, I don't know how to do that. Let me tell you. I don't want to embarrass anybody. Here's what you need to do. You need to have lunch with Tracy Bonds. I'm telling you the truth. This is a woman of God, okay? Chris and I adore you, Tracy. She is a woman of God. And, and, just go have lunch with her. Pay for her lunch. Don't make her pay for yours, okay? <laughs> go have lunch. Say, Tracy, I want a little bit of your time. Sit up next to her. Learn how to pray audacious, crazy prayers. You see this row right here of people? That's a single mom, not anymore, but a single mom that knew how to pray prayers and then did the work and spirit-led, spirit-filled, knew how to do the work. Don't, don't just listen to me. Go hang out with her. Get about 12 of you. Go hang, get a gathering together. Go hang out with Tracy. Let her show you how to do it. Go hang out with Ron Smith. Go hang out with Wayne and Eve Duff. Find some people that have seen some crazy things happen in their life and tell me how to do it, okay? How many of you don't know if you know how to get a word from God? Raise your hand. You don't really know? Here's how you do it. First of all, you pray and then you listen. Get in His word, all right? And then pray, but don't spend the whole time talking. Shut up for a little bit, okay? Let Him talk to you. And then once it happens, once you feel, okay, I think this is a word from God, then you go get around about three or four godly, mature people, and you go, did I hear from God? This is what I think I'm hearing. Is this right? And they'll either say, no, nah, it was pizza. Okay, go back and try it again. Or they'll confirm with it, and it'll work out. Look, living for God is not hard, okay? Yes, it can be hard. It's simple, though, okay? It's just simple. It's just that's the way it is. Get a word from God. Hang on to it with everything you have. Come to church every chance you get. Get encouraged. Get fired up. Get inspired. And let's go do it, okay? Amen. Amen. How many receive this today? Receive it. Amen. I'm excited about next week. We're going to be talking about the bones coming together. It's called divine alignment. Understanding how to be aligned with the right the right relationships, the right reasons, and the right resources. We're going to be talking about that next week. We're going to be talking about the breath of the Holy Spirit. Next week is Pentecost Sunday. Did you know that? Christian wore white too early, but you can wear it again next week, all right? Pentecost Sunday. Come on, you Church of Christ people, y'all don't get you on Sunday. You Baptists, y'all ain't got you on Sunday, uh-uh. Presbyterians, y'all ain't got, uh-uh. Pentecost Sunday, yeah. Okay, whatever. And John is the best gospel. So there you go. I don't know. I'm joking. Let me pray for you. Close your eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the life that I feel in this room right now. Thank you for the life that is in this room. I want to ask those of you today that when I talked about dead, dry bones, there's something in you. You're like, man, that's me. That's my world. That's my life. And maybe you've never... You've never began a relationship with Jesus Christ and you want to do it today. 
You've never asked Jesus to be your Lord. Never felt that life-giving breath in your, in, your, in your heart. And you want to do that today. Or maybe you want to make a fresh start. You've lived for him, but man, lately it's just dead and dry and stale. And you want, a, you want a, a do-over. If that's you today, I want to ask you just right where you are, just to raise your hand and say, I need a fresh start with Jesus Christ. Come on up high, not, not a little, but come on really high. Awesome, I see you, buddy. Yes, ma'am, that is awesome. Right over here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right there, I see you, buddy. Thank you, Jesus. All right, put your hand down. All right, I want everybody to open your eyes and let's stand. Aren't you glad you came to church today? Come on. I want to encourage you to invite some folks with you next week. It's crazy. People will come to church in the summer, all right? <laughs> invite some folks with you. You've got invite cards on your, on your chair. Put those in your wallet, in your purse. Uh, and, and invite some folks with you. Let's, let's pack this place out next week. Is next week intro? Is that right? Intro is next week going on. Uh, if you've never been through intro, that's where you learn about the calling and the culture of our church, how you get involved. Uh, I want to encourage you to, to register for that. Go by Next Steps, and they'll send you an email. Let's pray together. Raise your right hand. Come on, everybody in the room. Say this with me. Lord Jesus, thank you that you give life to dead things, that you take nothing and you turn it into something. I give you my life today. I want to live with you forever, and I want to start right now. Cover me with your blood. Fill me with your spirit. Breathe life on me. I want to live with you forever. Abundantly, come on, say overcoming eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's celebrate with these folks today that made fresh stars. Come on.